If you're in the market for an executive car, your choice is limited to a handful of dreary saloon cars, right? Well, not necessarily. If you fancy something a bit more stylish, you could go for a prestige coupe instead. Take these three for example. They've all got the premium badge that executive buyers crave, so they won't look out of place in the company car park. And with loads of cabin space and a big boot, each one gives you most of the practicality that a saloon car does. But importantly, they look a lot more stylish than your average saloon car. That makes these the perfect choice for Rob, so we've come to Hampshire to help him choose between the three. So let's see exactly what it is that he's after. My next car has to have the right image for my current lifestyle and also for work. I'm thinking of having a family soon. As a result, practicality and style is a must. The first car for Rob to try is the Audi A5. Now this is the oldest car of our three, but it certainly lacks nothing in style. The one we've got here has the most popular engine available, which is a two litre turbo diesel developing 175 brake horsepower. That makes it good for a 0 to 62 time of a very sprightly 8.2 seconds. Yet, it will still return an average of 60 miles per gallon. I'm not a fan of the Audi, but looking at the A5, I think its stylish features has a lot to offer. From the grille in the front that makes it look quite sporty, and the rims that complement that sporty look, I think the Audi A5 has that wide structure that will give that stability on the roads. The black and chrome interior gives it that sort of luxurious, sophisticated look. The dashboard, quite simplistic, easy to understand. Dials are where I expect them to be. The functions that it's provided is centralized, so it's quite easy to use. And the shortcuts on the steering wheel, quite useful. The only missing function I see is basically the use of the telephone, something I use quite a lot for my job. The controls are manual for adjusting seats. It's quite hard to reach. For the passengers, it's compromised leg space. I've been told that the Audi is less powerful than the other two. But after driving, it gives me that power and response when I need it to. It's nice and quick and easy to drive. I really like the weight of the steering, and the gear shift is smooth as well. I really like the way the car feels in general. It has a balance between being comfortable and sporty at the same time. The second car for Rob to try is this, the BMW 4 Series, and this is brand spanking new. Now, despite the name, it's essentially the coupe version of the ever popular 3 Series Saloon, and that is a seriously good start. Again, we've gone for the most popular version, the 420D. Now, this has got exactly the same fuel economy as the Audi, but it's a little bit more powerful with 181 brake horsepower. The BMW, it's one of the professional well-known brand of cars that they have today. I love it because of its look, starting from the front, the round circle headlights, the kidney grille, the line that goes along at the side that makes it look quite professional, as well as the fin on top of the car. It makes the overall look quite robust and strong in one sense. Even though the BMW is quite stylish from the front, I would actually prefer a little bit more effort and design and style in the back as well, to complement the front and the sides as well. As to the boots, it's quite decent size. The BMW's dashboard is quite simple. Um, it doesn't have much complexities to what it offers. There's very few buttons and one central control piece called the eye control that I do love. It has all the functions quite accessible in one location. In my case, I speak a lot to my wife while driving and also changing the radio stations while driving as well. So quite useful to have these shortcuts. I do love the thickness of the steering wheel because it, it gives me that sort of sense of confidence and control. I do not like the, the closeness and shape of the dashboard. There are shortcuts to just set the positioning of the seating. Having one for myself and two for my wife is quite a useful tool. As for the back, there's enough legroom considering it's just a two door. And there's a neat little armrest with two cup holders. I like the feel of the steering, it's quite meaty, it makes me feel like I'm in control on the road. I do like the strength of the engine, because when I put my foot down, it's quite responsive. I was surprised the BMW is this comfortable. It's quite smooth with the bumps, at the same time it has a sporty feel. 
The final car Rob's going to try is the Mercedes C-Class Coupe. This C250 CDI version is the most powerful member of our trio with 201 horsepower, but it's also the thirstiest, managing just 53 miles per gallon. It's also quite a bit more expensive than our other cars in its standard form, and this particular car has an additional £13,000 worth of extras. The Mercedes C-Class Coupe, quite a sporty look. Um, I do find it's quite attractive, especially with the grille in the front and the three-pointed star. I do love that typical look that it has. The only problem I have with this model is that it has a traditional saloon-type boot, and the matte paint job, a bit expensive for my taste, three grand. But overall, I like it. The boot has a wide opening, but it's quite small on the inside. The dashboard provided is quite complex, lots of buttons and easily distractive when driving. So there are shortcuts on the steering wheel and some key features that I do use a lot. The only problem is, is that there's no scroll functionality to actually find who you want to call. The display is quite cluttered. It will take a while to get used to. Even though it's automatic, it has manual adjusters, panels right at either side of the wheel to give you that sort of control, even though it's an automatic. One feature I don't like is the handbrake system. It's very old school. There's a lever right by your feet, which you need to press down to activate, and a lever to actually release. It's quite complex and quite bothersome. Mercedes is really, really fast. A lot faster than the other two. One thing I don't like is the steering. It's really light and slow to respond. I need a car to be fast reactive, especially with my driving style. I'm surprised the Merc isn't more comfortable. It's quite bumpy in the roads. Ideally, if I'm having a family, I will want something a bit more smoother. The Mercedes C-Class performs really well, really responsive, quite sporty from the front, but yet traditional in the back, not my cup of tea. The BMW 4 Series is the most simplest out of the three, easiest to live with. In terms of style, it comes second, and style means a lot to me. And as a result, the Audi A5 is my car of choice. The Audi A5 is the best looking auto three. It suits my needs in terms of practicality and space and speed and performance. Mm -hmm.